Year end could very well be the most important time of the year to reach out to your donor base with strategic funding opportunities. Sadly, too many nonprofit leaders either neglect to ask altogether or they ask incorrectly, and that is a huge missed opportunity. If this sounds familiar, don't worry. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement the perfect year-end appeal strategy for 2024. This strategy could be the key to ending your year fully funded and setting your organization up for success in the new year. Step number one, identify the who. Before you even begin crafting your appeal, you must know who you're going to ask. Now, your answer might be everyone on your donor list, or it might be a select group of your most loyal supporters. But here's the thing. You need a clear plan for how you'll engage each group. For many organizations, your staffing and budget will determine how much outreach you can realistically do. So, it's important to segment your donor base and figure out who should receive which appeal? For most nonprofits, donors typically fall into three categories mass donors, middle donors, and major or mega donors. Mass donors are those who've given smaller one time gifts, typically in the range of anywhere from $1 to 999 These donors are incredibly important because while each gift might be smaller, they add up when you have a large pool of them. Next, we have middle donors. These are people who've given between $1,000 and $4,999. These donors may not be giving at the top level, but they're incredibly loyal, and many of them have the potential to move into a major gift territory with the right cultivation. Finally, we have major or mega donors, people who have given 5,000 or more for larger organizations, that threshold could be 10,000 or even 25,000. These are your top tier supporters and they deserve a very personalized approach when it comes to year end appeals. So here's what I recommend. First, segment your donor base. Even if you're a small organization and don't have the resources to do a highly segmented campaign, you can still focus on your critical few. That's the 20% of donors who give 80% of your income. These are the people who are already deeply invested in your mission, and they should absolutely be included in your year-end strategy. Step number two, implement the strategy. This is where the magic happens. Once you've segmented your donor base, it's time to tailor your appeal to each group. You don't want to take a one-size-fits-all approach because different types of donors respond to different kinds of outreach. For mass donors, I suggest sending a two-page letter printed front and back with a dear friend salutation. You can include giving categories that match the level of their past gifts. For example, if they've typically given $50, you might suggest gift amounts of $50, $100, or $200. This helps guide their decision and makes them feel like their gift is meaningful no matter the size. Now, for middle donors, you want to increase the level of personalization. Send them a two-page letter, but make it two separate sheets of paper, not printed front and back. Use a personalized salutation, something like, Dear John and Mary, or Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You also want to suggest higher giving levels, such as 1,000, 2,500, or even 5,000, depending on their capacity. Here's the critical part. For middle donors, you want to follow up with a phone call about 72 hours after you've sent the letter. If you mention in the letter that you'll be calling, that's great. But even if you don't, a call can make all the difference. 
Did you know that a phone call can increase your positive response rate from 2 to 3% with just a letter to 25 to 30%? That's a huge jump and it shows the power of personal engagement. For your major donors, the goal is to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting if you are in a location where you can do so. Sure, a phone call will increase your response rate to 30%, but a personal meeting, that can raise it to 50% or more. When you're asking for a major gift, there's nothing like sitting down and sh looking them in the eye and sharing your passion for the cause. One more thing, if you can't meet with major donors face to face, a video call can be a great alternative. It's not quite the same, but it's still much more personal than a phone call. Whatever you do, don't rely on a letter alone for your major donors. They deserve a more personal touch. Step three, incorporating a lead gift. Since 2005, using a matching gift in my appeals has been a game changer. Here's how it works. You start by securing commitments from lead donors who are willing to match the gifts given during your campaign. For example, let's say your goal is to raise $100,000. You want to aim for lead commitments that make up about 50% of the total, so for $50,000. That could be five commitments of $10,000 or 10 commitments of $5,000. Once you have those lead gifts in place, you can announce to the rest of your donors that every gift they give will be doubled thanks to the matching donors. It's important that your lead commitment people do not give their gifts in advance. They've got to wait till the end of the campaign because most of our compliance organizations like Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability set standards that lead gifts cannot be given in advance. Why does this work so well? Because donors love the idea that their gift will go twice as far. It makes them feel like they, they're part of something bigger. They know that their $100 gift will have the same impact as a $200 gift and that motivates them to give. It also creates urgency. Donors understand that the matching gifts are limited, so they're more likely to give quickly before the match runs out. Also an important motivator might be to set a minimum amount, like $1,200, to qualify for the match. That also works well. Research shows that campaigns with matching gifts can increase giving by as much as 19% and the average gift size goes up 22%. That's huge. But here's the key. You must ask for those lead gifts well before you launch your campaign. It takes time to secure those commitments, so start early. If you wait until November, you're cutting it too close. I typically start around the beginning to middle of October. Step four, invest in the relationship. This is one of the most important yet often overlooked aspects of fundraising. Once a donor or partner gives, your job isn't done. In fact, it's just beginning. You need to follow up and thank them for their gift and the more personal your thank you, the better. Here's what I recommend. For smaller gifts, send a handwritten thank you note within 24 hours of receiving the gift. This may seem old fashioned, but trust me, it works. People still love getting handwritten notes and it shows that you took the time to personally acknowledge their gift. For larger gifts, a phone call is a great option, especially if it comes from your executive director or a board member. And for your major donors, consider an in-person thank you meeting. Yes, that's right. Don't just meet with them to ask for money. Meet with them after they give just to say thank you. 
And this kind of personal touch will deepen your relationship with the donor and increase the likelihood that they'll give again in the future. But come armed with a good successful story that you can tie in to what they're doing. Here's another tip. After the campaign is over, send out a follow-up report to your donors. Let them know how much you raised, how the funds are being used, and what impact their gift is having. This not only shows transparency, but also helps donors feel connected to the mission. When they see the difference their gift is making, they're more likely to continue supporting your organization in the future. So there you have it, four steps to creating the perfect year-end giving strategy. Let's recap quickly. First, identify the who by segmenting your donor base. Second, implement the strategy by personalizing your appeals for each group. Third, incorporate a lead gift to motivate donors and create urgency. And finally, invest in the relationship by thanking donors and keeping them informed. If you follow these steps, you'll be well on your way to running a successful year-end campaign and ending the year fully funded. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you, if you found it valuable, don't forget to hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.